guys, what's up? So welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be discussing some questions that I have been receiving via Twitter, such as how to install mods for a Minecraft server, how do you get Forge working for a bucket server with active plugins, how do you allocate more RAM into a server, and also, I'm going to be answering some other things such as how to fix a server crash, um, will having a lot of mods installed lag your Minecraft game, and also, how do I join a modded server? We're going to be discussing all of that in this video, so hopefully you do learn something, but before you start installing installing mods onto a server, make sure you know how to install it for a client. So you have to know the basic fundamentals of installing client mods for Minecraft, such as knowing the difference between Mod Loader and Minecraft Forge. Mod Loader mods don't really work for multiplayer unless they're already backed up and supported from Mod Loader MP. But that's most likely not going to happen because everyone's already switching over to Minecraft Forge. So in this tutorial, we're just going to be focusing on a Forge a server, you know, a forge server. We're not going to be focusing on a mod loader server. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. These are the mods that I want to install for a server, such as the backpack mod and the Dr. Zark's Mo creatures. So you have to know how to install this for your client Minecraft. And in order to do so, you have to have Minecraft Forge already installed. So if I go here to my .minecraft folder, which everyone should know how to get to, I'm going to go here to mods and I'm just going to copy over the mods I want to install right here into my mods folder in my .minecraft folder. So now that I have the mods installed for my client Minecraft, let's go ahead and install this all for a server. So anyways, what you need to make sure you have is the latest version of Minecraft. So Minecraft updated to 1.6.4, leaving 1.6.2 behind, but there are mods that will still work for 1.6.4 that are 1.6.2 if you understand me, such as Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures. This is all 1.6.2, but it is going to work for Minecraft 1.6.4, so the update really didn't kill any mods. Well, some mods, okay? Not all the mods died off. Uh, some are left behind, such as backpacks in Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures, which will still work. Anyways, if you are in Minecraft 1.7, 1.8, and all that other stuff, make sure you get the latest version of your mod, so make sure it's supported for the version that you're trying to install. Alright, so anyways, let's go ahead and download Minecraft Forge Installer 1.6.4. Okay, once you have that and you have already ran Minecraft once and installed the mods you want in your client Minecraft, let's go ahead and install it for a server. So what you're going to do now is you're going to double click this Minecraft Forge Installer 1.6.4. Once you open that up, you're going to get this mod system installer. So we're going to install a, uh, we're going to set the path to a specific directory, which we're going to make right now, to install a server. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a new folder on our desktop. You just right click, new, and folder, and let's go ahead and make ourselves a new server folder. I'm going to call this server tutorial, okay? So this is the server tutorial, or you could just, let's just go ahead and call it server forge. All right, there we go. It's more simple like that. Here's the server forge. What we're going to do is go here to in install server instead of instead of uh, install client. You're going to go here to install server. Go ahead and go right here to these dots right here to select the target directory. Go there and just wait a second. It's going to open up this right here. So now locate your server forge. This is where our server is going to be at. So go to desktop and locate it. Mine's right here, which is server uh, forge. Open that up and that's it. That's all you have to do. If it gives you a red warning, ignore it. All you have to do is just press OK and there you go. It's going to be downloading the stuff. It's going to be downloading, you know, um, the server. It's going to be downloading Minecraft Forge. It's going to be preparing everything for you. So let this download and make sure you have all the mods you want installed in your client section. So now that you get this message saying complete, go ahead and press OK. Now you have the a server forage folder already ready for you. You're going to open this up and you're going to see inside this folder that there's a libraries and there's also um, a Minecraft server 1.6.4 and a Minecraft Forge Universal in there. So what you're going to do is you're going to install this Minecraft Forge Universal into this Minecraft underscore server 1.6.4. All right, so what you're going to do is just right click this Minecraft underscore server 1.6.4 and you're going to open this up with WinRAR or any 7-zip opener. If you guys don't have WinRAR, Google WinRAR and download the free trial. After opening up the Minecraft underscore server 1.6.4, move it aside. Now what you're going to do is open up the Minecraft Forge Universal. What we're going to be doing is dragging over the files inside this jar into the Minecraft server jar. All right, we're going to open this up, right click, open with WinRAR and you're going to move that aside right over here to the other side, the right side. So here is the server on the left side. Here is the Minecraft Forge on the other side. What you can do is select on any file that you want right here, select on any file on Minecraft Forge Universal and press and hold down Control and A. After doing that, you're going to see that it selected all the files. 
Once it's selected all the files, drag it all into the Minecraft underscore server 1.6.4. Drag it all in there. This is in order to install Minecraft Forge. There you go. After you get this message and replace, just press OK, and there you go. If you got yourself a warning, then make sure you exit off a... Uh, Make sure you're not running a server while installing mods. So exit off your server, exit off your Minecraft game, make sure everything's exit off because you're installing mods. Anyways, once you have installed Minecraft Forge Universal into the Minecraft server 1.6.4, exit off everything. You have installed successfully. Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, what you're going to do now is you're going to run the Minecraft underscore server 1.6.4 and it should be able to work. Let's go ahead and double click that. Once you do that, you're going to generate more files. These are the server files you are looking for, such as the mods folder. So anyways, let this prepare spawn. This is generating your world. Go ahead and click save all if you want to and click stop. So once you have ran the server once, go ahead and stop it. And once you stop it, it should be able to close itself. So while it's stopping itself, go ahead and get your mods ready because we're going to be dragging over Dr. Zarks and all this stuff into your server right about now after this thing closes. Eventually, there we go. Now that it's done closing, let's install the mods. Go here to the mods folder. Okay, we're going to install these mods in the mods folder. Go into the mods folder of your server forge. What you're going to do is simply drag over all these files into your mods. So download the mod that you want, such as custom NPCs, and drag it all into the mods uh, folder. But wait a second, you have to understand, um, this is where you have to know the basic fundamentals of installing mods. Because if you don't know how to install mods such as the tree capitator mod, look over here. If you don't know how to install Tree Capitator mod, you have to make sure you have its core. Okay, here's the core that makes Tree Capitator work. If uh, if you don't know that, if you never knew that, like if there's core mods involved and stuff like that, then you'll never be able to install mods successfully. Such as people install Dr. Zark's Mo creatures, but they forget and ignore to install GUI API and custom mob spawner. These are required to make the mod work. Also, Reez Minimap, since it is a client. Uh, it's a client thing. It's not really a server thing. You can't just join a server and have a radar out of nowhere. It's not a server thing. You have to know the mod that you're installing before installing it. You get me? You have to go to the forum and read the instructions on how to install it for a client and also how to install it for a server. Every mod creator should have a list of instructions on their forum, so be sure to check that out. Now, wait a second. Now that we're inside the server forge mods and we're going to install all of these mods, you can't really install GUI API with Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures and Custom Mob Spawner because this is a client thing. So if you install this, you're going to crash your server. GUI API is pretty much all client side because it's dealing with the client GUI. Okay, now that you have you already have it installed for your client, the GUI API, you don't have to install this for a server. So ignore installing GUI API on a server. For Pixelmon, all you have to do is open up the Pixelmon zip, alright? When you download the Pixelmon zip, you're going to open up Pixelmon, and you're going to see there's two things, a mods folder and a database folder. You highlight those two things and drag it into your server folder, so it could override this mods folder and place its zip in the correct area and drag over the database. So that's how to install Pixelmon, okay? It doesn't really have anything like GUI API or this core mods. The reason why I can't install these into Minecraft is because they're outdated. They're 1.6.2. If so, if they're updated, I could have simply dragged over the core mod and the tree capitator into my server mod, you know, my mods folder. Anyways, inside this mods folder, what we're going to do is simply drag over backpacks, doctors, arcs, mo creatures and custom mob spawner. You don't need GUI API, that's only for client users or client side thing only, you know? So if I press, uh, if I go to my .minecraft folder, you could see clearly I have GUI API right here. This is just an API that deals with GUIs for your client Minecraft. Okay, if you go to Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures, you could read the instruction on how to install uh, their mod for a server. You know, the list of instructions is really clear. I'm just showing you how to do it again because you clearly don't understand. Anyways, here's backpacks, Dr. Zark's Mo Creatures, and custom mob spawners. What we're going to do now is double click the Minecraft server and it should be able to work. So just give it a second and there you go. Now you're going to get this message. Actually, you're just going to get it working. So after you install it for a server, let's go ahead and log into our Minecraft game. So I'm going to open up Minecraft. What I'm going to do is select my profile forge, press play and make sure that the mods I have installed are installed correctly. Another thing you have to make sure you uh, installed is your mods. Like if you if you're going to install a mod on a server, let's say you're going to install Divine RPG, okay? Even though it's outdated, let's just use that for an example. If you're going to install Divine RPG and you don't have Divine RPG installed for your client Minecraft, you can't really join it because you need to install it for your client Minecraft. 
So this is uh, one of the tips that we're going to be removing, such as how do we, how do you join a modded server? Just make sure you have all the mods installed in your client Minecraft. So in doing so, let's go ahead and go here to multiplayer and direct connect to local host. After connecting to local host, go ahead and go into uh, your server. And there you go. You should be able to find yourself a monster from Mo Creatures. So if I look around for a second, you're going to see there's a dolphin way over there. That is a dolphin. And eventually I'll find probably something else. Who knows? But I do have the mods installed. Look over there. You can see that there's animals over there. So if I swim, I might be able to show you that there's monsters. This isn't really a good example, but there are monsters. I have installed the server successfully. Look at this, a jellyfish. See? This is from Mo Creatures. A jellyfish. So now that we have installed the mods for a server, that is it. That's all you need to know. But wait a second. Let's go ahead and answer some of the questions that I have listed on the sticky note. So I'm going to disconnect and quit my game and stop the server. There you go. We have installed a mod on a server. It was not complicated at all. You just have to understand uh, how to install it. Like you have to go to the forum and read the instructions. So we now installed a mod for a server. That was easy. So how do you get Forge working for a bucket server with active plugins? Well, there is a specific type a of a uh, custom server for that. There's a there's a custom jar for that. It's called MCPC. So Bucket doesn't really support Forge, but there's a crew, there's a development crew that made MCPC. It's called MCPC Plus. So what that is, it's Forge and Bucket together. My server was running with this, and not that much people know about it. So let's go over here. In my description, I'll have the the, the Jenkins, uh, Jenkins or Jenkins, whatever, uh, the development builds right here for MCPC. What this is, like I've already said, it is Forge plus Bucket all together. But they are concurrently outdated. They're at Minecraft 1.6.2. Right now, we're at Minecraft 1.6.4. So you have to wait for this development team to update their latest jar to the latest version of Minecraft that you are in. So right now, I'm just waiting for Minecraft 1.6.4. And once that comes out, then you're good to go. Usually, these guys update very fast. Well, not really too fast, but right when Minecraft or right when uh, Forge right here updates, such as 9.11 for Minecraft 1.6.4, once Forge updates, then these guys update very soon. You know what I mean? So I'll have this in the, in the description. So if you want to check out when their latest uh, Bucket Forge jar is going to come out, then you could go ahead and download it. But when you do download it, go ahead and save it. And for an example, this is how it looks like. It's a jar, but you have to make sure you have a custom starter to start it. If you don't know what that is, then be sure to check out my tutorial. I have it uh, listed in the description on how to allocate more RAM using a starter. I'll show you guys that right now in a second. Anyways, if I make myself a new folder, a uh, new folder and call it Bucket Forge. This is if you want a bucket server. If you don't know what a bucket server is, you're able to run custom plugins. So. Yeah, you're able to have a bucket server and forge work together. So mods and plugins at the same time. But there are some plugins that don't support MCPC, such as um, BKM Common or something like that. There's another plugin called My World, which won't work and all that other stuff. But there's plugins like Hawkeye and, you know, uh, No Grief and stuff like that that will work. Anyways, let's open this up. And what we're going to do is simply drag over this jar that has the MCPC Plus. What this is, I've already told you, it's bucket and forge. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and rename this to anything I want, such as SCM owns. So now I rename this to SCM owns. And this is why you need uh, you need to do this because it, it just makes it a lot more simple. You can, you know, call it Billy or whatever. So if I would drag over my desktop over here to the this side, you can see if I go here to start and if I search starter dot bat, then there's a lot of starter dot bats that I have because I have custom servers. So if I copy this and paste this right here, what this is, it's a special bat file. It's a batch file, Windows batch, that will run this server right here. You can't just double click this. It's not going to work like a regular Minecraft server. What you need is a custom starter.bat, which you guys could get in my description. And you could get it from this video on how to reduce lag from Minecraft. What you're doing is making a special notepad. So if I open this up, you'll see that it's allocating more RAM into the SCM owns.jar. This is the SCM owns.jar. So once you run this, it's going to look for the scmones.jar and it's going to allocate this much RAM uh, into your your actual server. So yeah, you could customize this. So if you want more um, RAM, if you want like 2000 megabytes, then that's two gigs and you can run a two gig server. That's pretty cool. Anyways, if I just double click this, it should be able to start working with this uh, jar and you see it's already downloading everything Minecraft Forge requires, such as the libraries. Anyways, that is how to get bucket 
and Forge working together. All you have to do is just download the custom jar and you just run a custom starter.bat, which is listed in my description. And it also, if you guys want to know how to allocate more RAM into Minecraft, then watch uh, uh, watch my tutorial, which is how to reduce lag for Minecraft, uh, custom modded, all that other stuff. In this tutorial, I discuss how to uh, make Minecraft less laggy by allocating more RAM into it. So here's the downloads right here. Uh, you could also copy this code right here and make your very own uh, type of file. If you just watched this tutorial, then you'll probably understand what I'm talking about. But you could go here to my uh, website where, wait, hold on. My website's not there. So if you search SCM owns uh, bucket starters, bucket server starters on Google, you're going to be able to open up this web page that I made it. I made a long time ago. And here it is. It's called bucket server starters. There's a lot of different type of starters for 64 bit users and 32 bit users. What you do is just download these, whatever, which one works for you. I like using the edit uh, 32 because if you use this one, it's just, it's just all different. So if you download this, it's going to be downloading a little small, uh, word pad, a little small, like notepad text document. You just save it. And what you do is you drag this inside your folder like this, you drag over this uh, word little pad and you're going to convert this into a batch file. In order to do so, you double click it, you go to file, save as, and you locate the folder you're in, such as uh, bucket forge, and you save it as you backspace everything and you save it as all files and put dot bat. Once you do that, click save, it's going to say replace, whatever. And there you go. You, you just convert this notepad into a uh, dot bat just by clicking dot bat, you know, and saving it like so. And there's your starter dot bat. And that's what starts the server. Anyways, that is how to install a, a uh, you know, forge on a bucket server. It's quite simple. How do you allocate more RAM into a server? Just watch my video. I'm going to list it in my description or on the annotation above this video on how to reduce lag for Minecraft. So that answers another question. Another thing is how to fix a server crash. In order to fix a server crash, let me go ahead and stop this server. In order to stop one, you just read the crash log. Reading the crash log actually helps out. So if I open up this uh, server forge, let's go ahead and install a uh, Reese minimap, which you shouldn't do in a server forge or, you know, in a, in a f server that requires forge. Anyways, if I just run it, I'm going to get myself a crash log and you just read it. It's quite simple. Look, look, I got myself a crash log. What you have to do is go all the way up. You just scroll up and you're going to see right there. Minimap. Reese minimap. It says no class death right there. It says Reese minimap. What's your first intentions? If you see a crash log and if it says Reese minimap, go ahead and remove Reese minimap. That's it. You just read your crash log. If it says item ID conflict, that means that there's two items that have the same ID, the same number, and they're conflicting with each other. What you have to do to fix that is you go here to configs and you fix it. See, there's backpacks right here. If I open this up, you're going to see that you're able to adjust right here. Let me just drag that over. You're able to change the number of backpacks. Here's the ID of the backpack. If both the IDs conflict, then you go ahead and change this to any type of custom number that you want. So I could put 4444 and hope that no other ID is taking 4444. There you go. You just go to the configs and change the ID of the item and that will fix the ID conflicts. So hopefully that will work for you. And that is basically it. And also will having a lot of mods in Minecraft lag your game. Of course, it depends on what mod you have. The Aether will probably lag your game depends on what type of computer you have. If it's a fast one, if it's a slow one, then it'll probably lag your game. Anyways, with all that said, um, hopefully you understood something new, how to install mods for a server, how to install it for a bucket. And that is it. If you guys need more questions and all that other stuff, if you guys need more answers, then be sure to tweet me or make sure to post a topic on my help forums and ever, someone will probably help you out. So anyways, that is basically it, guys. Hopefully this tutorial wasn't really that confusing. I tried to do it at my best, but it's just so easy to install mods for Minecraft that, you know, maybe you guys are already used to this. You know, maybe this tutorial didn't help you because you already knew all this. Anyways, hopefully uh, you guys get all your server issues fixed and all that stuff. I'm going to go ahead and catch you guys later. If this video did help you out, hit that like button and you could probably even favorite to come back to it later in the future. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and catch you guys later. Thank you guys for all of your support. See you later.